Hello, welcome to part two of the Easy Deep Sky Astrophotography Guide. This is the guide for taking pictures of deep sky objects using just your DSLR camera on a static tripod. If you missed part one, it's because, uh, and you found us on YouTube, it's because there wasn't a video for this. This shows you how to take the pictures, and you can find the article written on the uh, website at learnastronomyhq.com. Um, and that will show you how to get the pictures in the first place and this bit was the stacking process so here we're going to use for PC users we're going to use Deep Sky Stacker and then uh, for Mac users we're going to use Regim um, so this video is Deep Sky Stacker on the PC so let's go ahead and load it up this is a free piece of software that you can download and it does a great job of stacking your pictures for you we're going to use M3 or Messier 3 a globular cluster as our target for this uh, demonstration now these pictures have already been used so uh, we'll see what happens so we're going to go to open picture files now you've got to make sure you're in the right folder because it'll always go into the last folder that you went to so always check you're in the right folder so come here M3 there it is uh, lights are the pictures that you've taken with the um, of the object itself that you want the final picture of. So select the first one and then shift select the last one to select them all. Make sure you've got raw files because you can upload a large number of files here. But uh, these are raw files directly from the camera and open those. It takes a little while to load them up into Deep Sky Stacker. seen that slow um, notice coming up maybe that's why it's taking a bit longer you can open this up a bit further because there's a few things to see here uh, we just move it across a bit more so you can see in the last bit okay so these this is all the light pictures already loaded up that's all of them there you can see it says here though light frame zero so we'll get to that in a little minute but uh, if you click to click on one of these pictures what it'll do is it'll bring it up it's always a good idea actually to pick one that's got a high score now when you first load your pictures in, your score will be zero um, and your all these bits down here won't have been calculated either. There's a picture, you can't see much in it. Luckily if you want to have a bit of a preview, you can use the levels adjust. And there you can see M3 is there, it's pretty small on this picture, but you can get a good final image. Um, so having loaded up the light files, you then go ahead and load up the dark files. So make sure we're in the darks. I know that's in the right folder, so we'll just select all the darks here. Open those up, and they should then appear underneath your lights on the list. If you scroll down, there they are. And you can see that there's 18 of them here. And then we go down to bias, uh, and load up the bias films. If you don't know what all these um, darks and bias calibration files are, if you go to the guide, um, part one, it will tell you what they all are on the website. So scroll down, you can see the biases are all here as well. These these pictures are all really to try and take away all the as much of the noise as you can get uh, to try and improve your final image. So everything's loaded up. You can see we've got 20 bias frames here. We've got 18 dark frames. Some people like to use flat frames. We're not going to use that for this demonstration. Now, as I say, usually the score and the number of stars is all missing. So we need to get our light frames up. So we're going to do that by going to check all over here and that brings up 350 light frames next step then is once you've selected them always register the checked pictures so you go along to the register settings first thing you want to do is well, when you first load this up this box won't be ticked this one says register already registered pictures um, we if you haven't had it haven't been if they haven't been registered before then obviously that that won't be ticked you can adjust how many pictures you want to keep 95 98 percent is a, is a good idea if you go to the advanced tab you can get the star detection threshold you know, this is quite an important step to do to start with press the button it'll just calculate how many stars it can see in the picture if you've got less than eight it won't work and uh, ideally you're looking for for about 200 or 100 to 200 if you can so this first image here is detected 318 stars so that's fine if you go to recommended settings then there'll be a it'll tell you what settings it thinks are ideal and anything in red here uh, you can select which one you want you can okay that and if we go to stacking parameters 
Standard mode generally is, is what you can start with. You can speed it up by selecting a, an area. Uh, if you use two times drizzle, you'll get a bigger picture at the end, or three times drizzle, but you'll need a lot of computing power. Two times drizzle gives you a picture twice the size, but requires four times the uh, computing power. And three times drizzle, drizzle gives you a picture three times the size, but uses nine times the amount of computing power. And that takes a lot. I like to tick align RGB channels in the final image. And uh, I've always set up a temporary folder um, to use to store the images as it goes on the uh, extra disk drive that I have. So we can go ahead and close that, and we just close that because what we'd like to do now is go to the raw fits DDP settings down here. Make sure you've got use auto white balance on uh, and bilinear interpolation. If you go to fits files, if you have a camera, uh, you can select it from here. There's a drop down list of all the cameras available. Um, actually, my Nikon it isn't on that list, so I end up having to use this generic one at the top here, and I tend to make sure that's all switched off. Okay, so having done that, you're pretty much ready to go. So go ahead to register stack pictures. Now, I'm going to speed things up a bit because I don't think we need to register the already re uh, registered pictures. I'm just going to take that off for, for this and hit OK. It gives you a, a brief summary of what's required. It will show you in red if there's anything not going to work, if you haven't got enough memory, for instance. So you can see here it's got 350 frames, total exposure time 11 minutes 40 seconds, and it tells you what it's got set to do. It'll tell you also how much space it requires um, for this process. So you go ahead and OK that, and now it'll start it's already registered them, it will go through a registering process normally and then it will go into the stacking process and you get the final image. At this point we'll just leave it because this takes uh, can take hours to do and it's usually best done at the end of the night and then you can wake up in the morning with your picture all ready for you. Okay well welcome back um, I'm sure you've had a good night's sleep. I cheated a bit here because well, I've already done this so I had an auto save picture so I could just load it straight back up and here you can see what you get. So you get this nice picture where a lot of the uh, a lot of the noise has been reduced. We can just try and zoom in on our object. Zoom back out and there it is there. As we zoom in on our object you can see there it is there. It's not a bad picture already. Um, I like to do a little bit of processing while I'm in Deep Sky Stacker and we'll leave that for the third video. Uh, but you can see already that you're starting to get a reasonable picture of M3 appearing using just your DSLR camera uh, on a tripod with no telescope and no tracking mount. Uh, so we'll move on to part three uh, next week, uh, which will be the processing of the image to try and get the best picture we can. Okay, have fun. Clear skies.